The canyon around our ship ripples and shifts, its walls narrowing and changing as we shoot along them at breakneck speeds. There's something mirage-like about the optical changes, as though we're weaving through a heat haze rather than some physical manifestation of the passage of time. There's nothing particularly mirage-like about the walls, though. Smashing into them is probably the worst thing that you can do in Scorcher. And since you've also got to dodge bombs, eat sharks, and jump over enormous worms, that's saying something. Scorcher is a super-fast arcade racer with a focus on getting as far as you can. You control your careening craft with a thumb at the bottom of the screen. Move your thumb left, and the ship swerves in that direction, and so on. Lift up your thumb, or if you prefer, swipe down, and your craft will perform a little jump. To begin with, it's innocuous, but the deeper you get into the experience, the more essential it'll become. You're not alone on the valley floor, though. Mostly, you'll encounter sharks, and you'll want to collect as many of them as possible. When you collide into a wall or a giant worm, you can eat a set number of the sand monsters and your health will recharge. It's a nice twist and gives you an extra chance to do well and push further. There are also bombs in your path which you'll need to dodge or leap over, and gigantic worms that crunch up the scenery and will do as much damage as a rock wall if you hit them. Learning how to get past them offers up a good chunk of the game's frustrations, as well as a decent dollop of its fun. There are problems here, though. It does take the game quite a while to get going, and while it is fun to begin with, it's nowhere near as fun as it gets later on. Mobile games often benefit from a little bit of top loading, and it definitely wouldn't go amiss here. Things can also get a bit repetitive, especially as you're trying to work to unlock new levels and ships. The progression curve is quite steep, meaning sometimes you'll hit your frustration tolerance levels before you actually manage to unlock anything. That's not to say that every run doesn't push you towards the next track or the next ship, it's just that there's a sense that the gaps between the unlocks is a little on the lengthy side. It's not the end of the world, but brains used to the dopamine floods of more casual mobile experiences might lose interest a little too quickly. But when this game hits its mark, when you're weaving between the worms and the walls at a thousand miles an hour, it hits them with the sort of strength and confidence few other games can muster. And this is enough to push you past Scorcher's faults. You're definitely going to notice them, but they're never quite large enough to force you to stop playing. They do, however, keep it from being as easy a recommendation as it could be. Scorch is good, but it could be really, really good if its balancing was a shade better. Still, when you're thrashing through the game, leaping over ravenous space worms, dodging bombs left, right and centre, your brain is going to be too caught up in the fun to care. This video is brought to you in association with Tribit Logic, the puzzle game about honing your coding skills to crush software bugs. Slide and combine operator panels like AND, OR, and NOT commands to transform enemy bug panels from four zeros to four ones, wiping them out for good. Previously available on mobile, Tribit Logic is now out on Nintendo Switch. Head to the eShop now if you want to grab a copy.